Hey guys, how's it going? Today we're going to work on a few things. We are going to look at the orchard grass. I want to show you how that's filling in. It's looking so pretty and exactly how I wanted it to look. Uh, we're also going to harvest some butternut squash that we have out here that are ripe. Not all of them are ripe, but I'll go over the signs and show you what to look for to know when they're ready to harvest. And then I want to take apart the little window box on the front of the chicken coop today. There are some geraniums in there that I'd like to save. So we're going to pot those and then possibly replant that window box. So a lot of fun stuff. First off, the orchard grass. Look at how it has filled in. Now there are weeds in it honestly don't even care. This is exactly the look I wanted. It will be taller than this. This RTF fescue grows like 12 to 18 inches tall and it's supposed to hold up to overhead irrigation without flopping as bad as some of the others. It was interesting when we were thinking about this space, you know, what can we plant? What kind of irrigation are we gonna be putting in? And you know that we put in regular grass sprinklers. We put them on 12 inch pop-ups though. So they rise up a little bit, well, quite a bit taller than your normal grass sprinklers. But then I had to consider, well, since we're doing overhead irrigation because that makes the most sense for this space, what can hold up to that? Um, and there's not a lot of stuff that will, or not a lot of grasses that will hold up to that without flopping over and looking kind of more matte like and I wanted something that would be able to stand up to that. Uh, so you know time will tell this one's supposed to do that. It's looking awesome though right now. There's our nectarine tree. You can kind of see back behind the pear tree you guys. I don't know I'm considering leaving it. It's got some pears on it and it has really rebounded. I don't know if that's wise to do though since I cut the leader out. Most of the time pears want to have kind of a central leader going on, but look at these. Look at this. Can you believe that? They're not ripe yet, but they're gorgeous. And moving on from there, you can see our peach tree here, which actually had a few more peaches than I thought it did. Really nice. Like there were some back here on lower branches that I never noticed. I only had noticed the ones right up in here. So I was thankful for that. There's another peach tree there, our apple tree. There's a new apricot we planted this year. Everything's just looking very healthy. You will notice that there's still some patchiness and, and things in here. And we're hoping that as this, uh, it's just a rhizomatous, you know, it spreads by rhizomes, this grass does. So we're hoping that it'll just kind of crowd out the weeds. But I kind of like the look <laughs> with the weeds. Is that weird? I just feel like it looks like it belongs and it just looks more, I feel at ease with this space. And then you will notice a gap from here to where the mulch area is. This is the last area we're going to seed for grass. So you know that all these pathways, let me just show you here, all the pathways here on the interior will be grass. Oh, is that a hawk? Oh my goodness. Do you see that in the shade? Right there. Let's see if we can get close. That is a hawk. Oh. oh, I wish I had the long lens camera, you guys. Wow. Wow. Well, it flew, so it's not injured. Wow, look at that, you guys. Anyway, you can see that the grass pathways really look nice. I'm so excited about it. And I can see a haze of green. We just seeded this one not long ago, like last week. You can see it from different angles a little bit better. Look at how gorgeous the grass pathway is though. I don't know exactly where the hawk went to, but that was kind of cool, wasn't it? Okay, back to the task at hand. Oh, now I'm gonna be thinking every movement's the hawk. There are just loads of birds in this garden every single day, all the time. And I can hear them in the zinnias right now. It's probably wise that they stay in there for now but it's just been such a wonderful spot. So we will have a grass pathway that looks like this that runs right in front of the flower shed and right in front of the orchard, as well as making a complete perimeter. It'll go all the way around up to the orchard fence on the outside. And it's interesting how these grass sprinklers work, at least in the entryways, because you can see like right here, we seeded all the way up to the mulch, but this didn't germinate because this is going to receive water from the sprinklers that run here. 
So for the overlap and it just wasn't enough to get it going, we likely will not get this area seeded until next spring uh, because we have to still have access to this area and we've basically uh, made access impossible on the sides. So we can't get in from this side or the middle section for now. We have to access everything from the front uh, because we don't wanna drive on the brand new grass. But anyway, all that said, you can see there's a little gap between the orchard and where this is. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and seed the whole thing. We might end up bringing sprinklers out a little bit in the, in the orchard because we thought initially we might plant some kind of a little hedge right here or do a little rock wall and we might still do that. But I feel like in the end, it may be better just to have grass, like have a mowed path right up to here and then have more natural grass in here because the canopies of these trees will eventually you know, come over this area. And if we've got like some kind of a hedge here, stone wall would be fine. But if it was a some kind of like hedge and it was dropping fruit in the hedge, that would be kind of a mess. And then of course, next year, I'm gonna plant little flower beds right around the, the uh, shed. So they'll start at the back and it'll just be very, very um, relaxed. And they'll kind of come around the front and then we're going to bring some of those flagstones out here and create just a little approach to the door uh, you know with things on either side so that's where we're at with the orchard grass i'm so happy with it i love the way it looks i love the way it's just all coming together and i like the feel out here i love love to spend time out here this whole space has just felt less uh, structured more relaxed this year because I've let things self seed I've let it just be a little bit more natural and part of me loves that you guys know I love a good formal garden I like the structure and I think having just little elements of that having the grass pathways will be very nice because that will allow or will uh, give the space a super defined defined borders defined look but if we've got everything in the middle kind of just this jumble of color and beauty I don't know I think it's a good a good blend all right guys let's get in here and get some butternut squash so this was kind of a, a little bit of a mistake, like maybe too natural in here, because you know, I've got my formal lines. There's a row here, row of zinnias there. There's a row here indicated by the drip line. My row of strawberries is here and so on and so forth. I planted two butternut squash plants thinking, oh, I'll, I'll keep them in check. Do we ever keep anything in check in the garden? I mean, maybe you guys are better at it than I am, but I just kind of like go in with good intentions and then I just let things take over which is not a horrible thing because we have a butternut squash crop to beat butternut squash crops we're not going to be harvesting everything today because this one is not ripe so i want to show you what the difference is see how this one's still green this one still has a ways to go and if i try to pierce the skin with my thumbnail i don't know if you can see that i don't want to do it too much but i can make a little indentation you want to wait till the skin is hard uniformly tan and the stem is dried up so let's find one I mean, they're just, they're everywhere. I've got Feverfew right here, which is the sweetest filler flower and it's a perennial. There's some butternut squashes in there. I'm gonna find an easier one to reach though. Oh, right here, this is perfect. Oh, there's a couple right here. First off, I mean, you can tell too when your plant starts to die back, see how this is starting to look. Um, we're going to leave the plant today and just harvest the squash that are ready. But check this one out, this one looks great. So uniformly tan from top to bottom. If I try to pierce with my thumb, nothing. It's got nice hard skin. The stem is a little bit more dried out. It looks more brown than green. And you know, when these leaves start to die back, that's another, another indicator. So I've had my Falcos in my back pocket this whole time. You wanna leave as much of the stem as possible. So we'll go in and voila. That's what you look for. That's wonderful right here. We're go going to set them out to cure before we put them in storage, but I'll talk about that in a minute. So what I'm gonna do, and we've got some huge ones. I'm gonna go through, look at this monster. That one looks really good. Yeah, no indentation. So let's, let's take this one. Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh my, that was shaped weird. But I think we're gonna find a lot of these in here. So let's do it. Let's harvest these, take a look at what we've got, and then we'll come back out later to harvest the rest. Because I see another one, like this one's not ready. It's still too green. All right, guys, here we go. I'm excited to see what we end up with.
plants, 64 squash. <laughs> this is incredible. Look at this haul, oh my goodness. I knew that there were a lot out there, but I didn't realize that there were this many. And I would almost bet that we'll find more when we clean the vines completely out. I did end up with like three that are a tiny bit immature. I accidentally cut the vines to them. So anyway, I pulled them, but this is just amazing. I kind of want to weigh that one right there. That one I think was the heaviest one. And there are still a few squash out here. You know, there's the two right here and there's probably like two or three immature ones just like this, these two right here left in this pile. Um, I did try to pull all the vines. That's why it looks like kind of a wreck. I um, pulled all the vines to the center and we'll just leave them here until those, either the vines dry up or those ripen. Anyway, that was just incredible. And it wasn't two hills. It wasn't like I planted five seeds per planting site. It was two individual plants. I got them in a two pack down at the garden center. We planted them with the Biotone Starter Fertilizer, Land and Sea Compost. That's all they got all season. And my word. I don't think I've ever had productivity out of two vines like that. Now we start the curing process, which is just really easy. That just means setting them out to dry. Um, in the process, they just kind of, um, like any excess moisture inside kind of evaporates and it slows their respiration rate, which lengthens their storage. Also when they're curing and that moisture is evaporating, the skin hardens and the interior sweetens up a little bit, which is awesome. Sometimes people leave them out in the garden for like a week, like they'll cut them from the vine and let them sit out in the garden if it's still warm enough. If they are subjected to a frost, it won't hurt them. It'll just shorten their storage life. It will actually make them a little bit sweeter in the end. So if you just have a few on your vine and you want them to be really super duper sweet, you can let them go through a frost and then cut them. They just won't store quite as long. But when you have 64 squash, um, we want to get them into storage because there's no way we can eat those super fast, but it's going to be a wonderful thing to pull from, uh, you know, through the winter fall, winter, and spring months. So I'm gonna line these squash up on that tabletop that I dried the onions on. So it's got hardware cloth, so it's breathable, you know, from all directions. And I'm gonna put them in the greenhouse. Actually, do I have an empty table? I might just have an empty table in there I can line them up on. So they'll sit there for two weeks, they'll cure, they'll dry, the skins will harden even further, uh, which will lengthen their storage life, and then we will pop them in the root cellar. Now the three or four that I picked that are slightly immature, you can pick them when they're slightly immature. They just, it's better to just wait until they're completely ready to be picked. Um, and so you look for that uniform tan skin, the skin that can't be punctured with a fingernail and a nice hard kind of brown stem. There are some whoppers in here. Now there are a few you will notice that got scratched or something along the way and they're completely fine, but we'll eat these first. So when I go through these and get them ready for actual storage, we will wipe them down with a dry rag. Don't wash them or introduce any water. Um, you pull off any extra bloom. So like right here, I think that might've been a bloom still attached to the bottom of that squash, take anything like that off and then kind of make a separate pile for yourself of damaged ones. If they get nicked or scratched a little bit, they will be fine. But if there's deep cuts, like this one has some marring too on it, we'll go through those first. That is a happy sight right there. Okay guys, we're gonna head to the greenhouse and get these lined up and then we'll tackle the window box on the chicken coop. There's my breakfast along with a bunch of strawberries I just ate out in the garden. Real quick guys, we're gonna take a little detour. I found something really fun at the back of our new property. You know, it's lined by, uh, there's a ditch back there, so there's water running through. Oh, hopefully we don't lose any of these off the back. Anyway, I saw something kind of uh, like tinged red in the back. And so I went back there and kind of started looking around and there's just some really fun stuff. And there's tons of willow, which is really fun. Like willow that's coming up from the ground, single stems, which will be great for weaving, things like that. So excited about it. There's also a walnut and an apricot tree. I don't think we lost any. Ooh, almost. Woo. Stay put, squash. Okay, it's right back here. Isn't that beautiful? We're not gonna mess with any of this. Uh, we are going to leave it just as is. Right back here, you guys. So if you look down in here, you can see the water and there's tons of rose hips back here. Isn't that gorgeous? Just like a big bank of rose hips and it looks like grapes. Is that grapes right there? Those look an awful lot like grapes. I don't see any fruit though right now. Those are definitely grapes. Aren't those just gorgeous though? I can use these in some arrangements for the holidays. And 
another really sweet thing. Look, a pear. There's a pear tree in here. I thought there were two pears on it the other day. Oh yeah, here, right down in here, it fell off. Oh, that's good. Got a hole on the other side, so I'm not gonna eat too far into it, but yum. I feel like we're going to be discovering all kinds of little things in this area. A little history on this little piece of land that we bought. So, you know, it's attached still to another piece of property that has a house on it. It belonged to a doctor in our community and his wife and family who we were friends with. And my parents were friends with that family before we were even born. And um, now the grandkids live in this house, but out here, um, Dr. Th Dr. Thornfelt was his name. He was a huge gardener. He had a field of iris, he bred iris, and he would garden with headlamp on. Uh, I was talking with his granddaughter and she just said he that's where he like that was his therapy time that was his downtime and his hobby and his and one of his passions so out here it used to be just like huge garden area with lots of iris and you know an orchard clearly because of the apricot and the pear tree that we are benefiting from now um, so anyway it's kind of just a neat a neat deal we do have skunks and foxes uh, I've never seen anything else other than those two things uh, around our house anyway, but I'm guessing that, you know, this whole area back here is just like a massive like acres of trees and brush and things like that, kind of more of a natural wild area. Um, so I'm guessing that they, they live back in there somewhere and then they come up and, you know, see if they can find any cat food or anything like that around our house. And that right there, that tree is the apricot tree. So I'm wondering if Dr. Thornfell at one time like planted trees along the irrigation ditch so that they could benefit from that, you know, the moisture around their roots. And you know, it worked because they're still alive and there's no irrigation out here right now. There's another big rose. Ooh, that one's got beastly thorns. I wonder what color, if this is just an old wild one. Okay, we'll go back to the gator, get our project done. I could just spend a lot of time though, poking through that, gathering up some pretty things. I just love it. So they're all lined up in the greenhouse now. Look at these gorgeous things. Oh my gosh. So this table right here, I put all of the good ones that didn't have any um, cuts and things like that. That's the pile we'll work through first. You can see this one. This one's really immature. I don't know if that one's gonna actually um, turn out okay. I accidentally uh, cut that one off the vine, but for the most part, amazing. And then right over here, we've got some hellebores, which is very exciting. But look at these. I don't even know like what in the world. These were all the ones that were in the zinnias. Is that weird? I mean, I think that I'm gonna save these three because they look like mouths and Benjamin and I'll have a little art project with these. <laughs> we can add some Google eyes and paint them and go outside and find some fun like mossy stuff to make hair. Anyway, I think that'll be a fun, fun project. Make the best out of these weird cuts. It almost makes me think like a trimmer, like a grass trimmer came through and just just uh, trimmed those, but there was no grass there. So at the time it makes no sense. But for the most part, like this one's not too bad and they're completely dry. The cracks are dry in all of these. So they're completely edible um, and we'll just eat these ones first. Okay, let me show you the window box we're gonna work on. It's this one right here. So you can see the coral geraniums. There are three of them in this window box. And then there's Super Bell's Plum, which has seen better days. So it's time for a swap do something different in this. I might take after this Zephyrine Rose too. You can see it's kind of gone out of control again, kind of coming forward. Things are looking really pretty in this bed though. We've got some going bananas daylilies, which are looking tired. They need to be groomed up a bit. Super Tunia Bordeaux. There's Truffle of Pink Gomfrina, some unplugged So Blue Salvia, which looks absolutely gorgeous with the Oh So Easy Peachy Cream roses and the one i cut all the way back you guys remember it had spider mites so bad earlier this season let's come back check it out come back fresh from the base and it's even got a bloom on it all right so let's get this done
this one does not want to stay. Got it done. Basically just cleared out any of the growth on the rose that was shooting outward. And you'll notice I did leave some longer stems. I'm gonna get a ladder out one of these days and start training those. I wanna train some up over the top of the window and then also wanna keep going that direction. We use a couple of different things to help train them. I'm not sure what these are called. You can get them in little bags at the hardware store. They're like little wire clips. It's a little nail with that white clip. Uh, and it's just enough to where we can kind of pinch a piece of this rubber coated uh, or yeah, this is rubber coated wire right here. You pinch it underneath the clip and then you can just kind of put those wherever you want a branch to be and then you just tie the branch off right there. So I've got them all over the place. In fact, I've even got a few that I'm not using right now. And then over here we ran a grid. So there's two vertical running and three horizontal running wire cables right here. So we just use those little uh, hooks that have the screws on the end and just, you know, made a grid. Out of, out of the wire cable. So it is nice. You can kind of tie off. I'm seeing if there's any, I didn't tie these off, but you can also thread them behind and kind of help guide them where you want to go. So I need to make another grid right here too, because Zephyrins, I think they grow like 20 to 25 feet long. So eventually we can have the front of this kind of covered with the roses, which will provide more shade for the chickens, which was the goal. This is the west side of the coop. We do have a couple trees though that do help quite a lot. Best part about the Zephyrins is that they're thornless. So you can work with them with bare hands and it doesn't matter. Cleaned up the daylilies just a little bit, even though it's kind of unnecessary at this point. You know, this late in the season, they're gonna all turn yellow, the foliage will, and kind of flop to the ground. But they look pretty with their blooms right now. In fact, I decided to mirror the color in the window basket, kept it really simple, but I love it, especially after the summer where you've had, you know, tons of stuff in this area. It's kind of nice to be able to see the basket and to have kind of a clean look. So I just did several pansies in the back and ringed around the front with these four inch cabbage, which are so pretty. That purple center, oh, it's so, so beautiful. And the geraniums ended up in the Hartley. So I potted those, I got some fertilizer out and gave them a good drink with some food in it. So they should really like it in there. And they've been used to the sun out here cause they get nailed in the afternoon. This window does just full on afternoon sun and plus that reflective heat off of, you know, a building. So I think they're gonna do really well on the table. I put them on in the Hartley, which typically all my other house plants have burned right there. So I'll keep my eye on them and see how they do, but I'm really happy with getting those in before it gets too cold. Anyway, guys, that is gonna be it for today's video. Wonderful, wonderful harvest of butternut squash. I'm so excited about it. And then just taking care of a few little things out here in the garden. So thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it and we will see you in the next video.